Hello, everybody. Carlton Pearson. I have today probably one of the most interesting, intriguing persons and personalities that I've ever interviewed or met, because I've met people all over the world. He's the son of a preacher. The name of the book is Son of a Bishop. <laughs> and I relate to that. Uh, in fact, I like the terminology of Son of a Bishop. I use it a lot because people call me that these days mm. for different reasons. His, this is Eddie Long Jr. He wrote a book called Son of a Bishop. And he's here today to discuss this book. But I want to start by saying, reading some of the preference. First of all, have you wondered what it's like to be a preacher's kid? I'm a third generation, fourth generation preacher's kid. So I identify with that question immediately. Are you needing help developing your personality while being under the umbrella of an influential parent, whether they're a preacher or a doctor or a celebrity? His, his father was a celebrity, not just a preacher or a bishop. He was a celebrated preacher. And he was like a rock star in the religious world. And so, and really outside it. Are your parents leading or serving in ministry? Do you need help navigating the nuances or sometimes the nuisances of balancing your personal growth and development with the calling or pressures of ministry. Millions can relate to that. This book is very important and you're gonna want it. Are you pastoring or leading a ministry while parenting? I relate to all of that. Are you struggling to relate to your son or daughter? I've been through that. Are you looking for insight on how to help your children live a normal life while ensuring that they are developing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and identifying their calling? These are questions that are addressed in this book of, um, let's see, how many pages? 200 and some, 230 pages. has a beautiful pictorial in the back with his lovely new wife. And they have a baby at the time we're taping this just a few months away. This book has a collection of 14 stories about my dad and me throughout my life, which will make you laugh, cry, scratch your head, and maybe even say, hmm, okay now. <laughs> That's the part you're going to be hit. The, mm, what, wait a minute, let me read that again. That's in here. Some stories may even ruffle your feathers and cause you to look at either one of us, he or his dad, with a side eye, but trust me, it's all good. You're all good, dude. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Likewise. So good to meet you. So good to yes, have sir. you. I met you. Highland Bakery. Highland Bakery. Yeah, about four or five years ago. Four or five years ago? Yeah. I was intrigued to meet you. I'm intrigued because of a um, few men your age, and you're still in your 30s, um, could endure being the son of a famous anybody, mm. but preacher means you're supposed to be holy mm. and you have to have a certain decorum or a certain attitude and people have expectations of you that mm. they might not have of normal lay people. Mm -hmm. I went through that as well and I have a lot of preacher's friends and so I love the term. I don't know if I suggested that title to you because I've said it for many times, but it's a perfect title for your book and for the stories that you tell. Thanks for being honest, mm. earnest, and, and authentic enough to tell your story, to wow. own your truth and honor it. I saw you briefly at the memorial service at the funeral, actually, because the body was there, and your words <laughs> right off the top told the whole world, this dude knows what he's doing. He's not mm. making anything up. Uh, you're authentic and earnest, and you know what it's like. Mm. That said a lot about your character. Wow. I respect that, that you could be ruined and bruised and angry and bitter and something mm. other than who you are, and I'm sure you wandered through all of those kinds of mm. things. Tell me most what um, you what what point you want to make in a thesis statement with this book. Well, you know, it's it's tough to throw a thesis out with a theologian like yourself, you know, uh, who's who's highly revered. And I appreciate you. I appreciate your authenticity as well and um, your ability to stand concerning our family and specifically my father, sure. even when it's not popular. Mm. You know, I. I, I you got me when I was watching CNN and everybody's trying to say this or say that and you simply just talked about your experience with my dad. Mm -hmm. It's not about fabricating something. It's right. not about trying to vindicate someone. Mm -hmm. It's just about telling your truth. And at that moment, I said, I, I get him and I'm sure he would get me. So mm -hmm. I thank you. Um, what, what would I want people to walk away from in this book? Mm -hmm. 
I just want people to be exposed to my father in the ways that I knew him. Good. Because there's so much impact there. I would not be who I am. Clearly, I wouldn't be in existence. But after being in existence, I would not be who I am without my father, without his teachings, both in private, across the pulpit, all the things that he demonstrated. And there's so many other people who would attest to the same thing. And so for that collection of people around the globe who never met him, who won't have a chance to in the physical, I hope that the words in these pages would now introduce him to them and they can sit back and say, wow, this guy was impactful. He was real. I really missed out on meeting a very genuine person. Mm, good point. What did you like most about your dad? I know there's a lot of things, but if, in a statement, what stood out to you most? What will you remember most favorably mm -hmm. about your father? <sighs> My dad had a way of just being comforting. Whatever you're going through in life, you know, uh, if, if it's playing the big game in high school, mm -hmm. if it's going to the dance, if it's dating someone, if it's thinking about what's going to be my next, trying to make choices and decisions, he always had something profound to say. But what, for me, allowed the statement to really resonate was the environment that he created first, without having to do much. Mm. You know, I, I've had a chance to meet Beyonce, um, P. Diddy, you know, so many celebrities. Steve Harvey, I saw a picture yeah, of that. Many. Mm -hmm. And not everyone carries that larger than life mystique. But my dad had it without trying. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just created comfort to just know whatever I was approaching him with, whatever was on my mind, whatever I was pondering, is going to be okay. And then he shared his words that now gave me something to hold on to to recreate that moment whenever he may be absent. You feel me? And so now it's being a new husband, you know. And being father a, be a new father. You follow, you follow me? Yeah. Uh, just venturing into things, you know, exploring ministry in a different type of way, moving around the world, meeting new people, et cetera. Many of these things he's already done. I don't have that audience for that comfort, number one. And then number two, just to get those crown jewels or those nuggets that he would share that I know I could hold on to this word. That's, that's what I miss the most. Did you feel like you were um, loaning your dad to <laughs> the world and getting a little piece of him? Because when you were born, he, he wasn't this huge household name. Mm -hmm. um, but he grew into that while you're alive and you had to watch him evolve mm -hmm. and you had to evolve mm -hmm. and in some ways dissolve mm. to find your place in his life. What was the experience of uh, watching your dad become everybody's dad or mm. pastor? What was that feeling? You hit it on the, I, I never, the dissolve part is unique because mm -hmm. I talk about, I call it the slash syndrome. Mm. For me, father is the most important title or role that he could have in my life. Sure. That's it. Father. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so as he goes through his matriculation in ministry, his professional career, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know, becoming an associate pastor, then becoming pastor at New Birth, and then becoming bishop and mentor, visionary, uh, Grammy Award winning artist, and all of these things, these are new slashes that in this pie of dad, now it starts to cut that true. piece up <laughs> and giving somebody else a slice and this a slice. And so I, I love how you put it. It, it. it did begin to dissolve because I'm watching other people gravitate to him because of those titles. Sure. And I'm like, I don't need none of that. <laughs> just give me father, yeah. you know, yeah. and just... Uh, um, going through periods of resentment because of that. Mm -hmm. And now you got other people, you know, in, 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 in our um, culture, mm -hmm. you know, concerning the faith, we call folks, you know, that's my spiritual daddy or daddy this and all of those things. And, you know, I'm looking at Negroes like, daddy, what, who, yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, who, who are you? <laughs> well, and, and then, you know, so that's one group of people. And then there's another group of folks who uh, are, are my peers who I go to high school with, or middle school with, or college with, or what have you, and 
I go to the same parties with them. I do the, and, and so now I'm privileged to certain other conversations where people are telling me, hey man, they, they, they just trying to milk your dad or do this. And so now it's not just frustration and resentment. Now we slide into the anger space mm. because now you're playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm trying to deliver that mail to him. And he may think I'm tripping or just not because he sees. My dad had the ability to see the best in, in people. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And for some, sometimes that can be, it can be blinding. You know? That, that can be to one's own detriment. So I, I definitely had to ride that carousel to get to the other side of it where I am now. Have you matured since um, when you first started riding that carousel? Mm -hmm. Of course, how have, how have you grown, expanded, or extended yourself into a different realizations of your father mm -hmm. that makes it more comfortable or manageable mm -hmm. to be his son? Um, one, Grace. Grace. My dad, and I'm sure you can relate to this. You know, you step out in ministry and you have a vision of one thing. Mm -hmm. But then when that anointing comes, God's uh, supernatural falls on your natural abilities. Yeah. And, and now you've got an Azusa. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you, you've got a mega fest that, that <laughs> is just yeah. boom. You've yeah. got uh, a taken authority, new birth ministry. His... Pop talked about pastoring a mega church with a thousand members. Now in the eighties, nineties, all that, that you was know. Huge. That's I know. I know. So for thirty thousand, nobody even dreamed of that in those days. Come on, thirty thousand. Yeah. And so I, I had to accept that this is who he is. You know, my dad was mentoring uh, young men since college. You know, one, one a person who's very dear to me, uh, Bishop Monty Campbell my dad's first mentee mm -hmm. while he's driving buses in college who ended up being employed by my dad and going on. So this is who this man is even before my existence mm -hmm. and having to come to terms with that. And then, you know, not doing, doing the math, not addition, not multiplication, but we have to look at this exponentially because yeah. that's the type of explosion it is. Of course. So this is naturally who he is and now God decides to take him and magnify him, it doesn't reduce who he is, it magnifies all that comes Spans along with it. Is, yeah. so, and the type of pastor, bishop, minister, uh, imparter that he was, if he's traveling, he meets people everywhere. Hey son, hey daughter, he just feels that. Of course. He feels there's a void in your life and God is leading me to, to, to take to you or for you to take to me like this. And so I, I had to learn to give him grace and accept this is just who he is. Mm. You could have had another father. Sure. And alcoholism could have been their issue. Uh, they could have been absent. You know, it, it could have been a myriad of things. This is just y'all's relationship. This is just the calling on his life. And this is just for you to learn from and, and, and grow in. So where I am sitting now, it's okay. And you, you know, you and I were talking, it, it's you're becoming a father. Now certain things that you saw him wrestle with, you will wrestle. Now with. it's starting to resonate with you. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, absolutely. And, and, and you're having to make certain decisions. So for me, at this point, you ask, have I grown? My growth now is, all right. Don't forget what troubled you, and what upset you, what disgruntled you, mm. because these are conversations you're probably gonna have to have. With, you. with your lineage, sure. with your offspring. Mm -hmm. And so when they're presented, don't run from them. Uh, I challenge myself now to go ahead and put certain things in place, to engage certain conversations, even with my wife, you know, um, sort of the accountability is there, instead of, you know, as my dad was traveling and moving around, mm -hmm. I didn't really despise that. My only issue with that was simply, take me with you. <laughs> At least on some of them. You know, yeah. don't, don't, don't leave me behind. Sure. Um, if we were now, I think it'd be a lot easier because we're in a virtual world. Yeah. You know, you can learn wherever you are. Yeah. But my mind was thinking like that then. Like, hey, man, you know, it, 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 we can figure this out. But, uh, of course, that wasn't how things were working during that time. So 
you know, for me, I'm already moving. You know, this book has opened up a lot of doors. It's allowed people to see me for me, mm -hmm. not just underneath his branches. Of course. And, and, and so, you know, I'm having to fast forward and think like that. And again, it's, it, it's causing me to say, all right, Pop, I know you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me. Wow. I, I was a little tough on you about that. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I'm getting it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I debated on whether or not to name my son Carlton Demetrius Pearson. Mm -hmm. His middle name is Demetrius, but it's Julian Demetrius because I didn't want him to have to either live up to something or even live down. Mm -hmm. That's the risk most men like to name their first son mm -hmm. after them. It's just such sort of tradition, particularly in the African-American culture, but it's all over the world, at least the Western world. You have his name. Mm. And everywhere you go, even if people don't know you're his father, say, well, you're Eddie, the Eddie Long? Mm -hmm. Is that, are you, and you say, you say that's my dad. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're saying that's my uncle or my goddad. Right. That's my biological father. Then their whole attitude changes mm -hmm. about how they're going to perceive you. Mm -hmm. And I know you have to dance through that and negotiate and navigate, and navigate through all those different, from your wife to girlfriends to friends. You're the son of a famous world famous, some people mm -hmm. infamous pastor. Mm -hmm. You have to live both those and and, and find the balance mm -hmm. in being who you are unapologetically. Right. What did you like, and you can refer to that, and then what did you like least about your dad? So to, to your first point, uh, I talk about that in the book, uh, especially around the introduction or what have you, yeah. about my names, because I got a mirror of names. Yeah. I got some childhood names, Did you nicknames, know, nicknames, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, m my uh, first rap name, a music artist name was Young Dirty Bishop. Oh, all right. <laughs> so Did you have dirty language in your rap? <laughs> I'm going to take my belt off, boy. <laughs> so uh, you can imagine, you know, uh, the position that put him in, yeah, of course. if you will. And... You know, so, so was that a streak of rebellion? Why, why would you be careless in your language as the son of a preacher so in your raps? The way I got the name really? was playing high school football. A teammate of mine, Stephen Tooks, he called me Dirty Bishop because I played tight end. I'm probably 165 pounds wet playing tight end. Wow. Now, tight end... You need to be about 200 pounds, give sure. or take, even in high school. Mm -hmm. So I had to play dirty, you know, in order to do my job and oh, do it well. Okay. So I'm pinching people. I'm doing this, cutting folks, you know, uh, you know, just, just all kind of stuff to get the job done. And one day he just donned me with the name. It's the bishop. It's the dirty bishop. <laughs> and it just stuck. You wow, feel me? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I go on. I was already rapping at the time, but I, I was just going by my, my name at the time. So you, were you, was your rap music Christian music? <laughs> It just... started off that way, and once I got to college, you know, I started hanging around a different crowd, et cetera, and I got vulgar for a little while, and then I had to reel it back. So I was on the radio down at Florida a University, FAMU, and I'm rapping, I'm a student, on the radio, all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing everything, too. I'm talking about Lil John, the East Side Boys, 50 Cent, Jay-Z, just whatever, you feel me? Mm -hmm. By the time I get to my junior year, I start realizing I really love radio. I'm going to have a career in it, all of that. But I got to go back home to Atlanta. Now, I can be wild or not while I'm four hours away. Sure. But I'm going back to my dad's city. <laughs> this ain't going to work. And so God gave me this concept called urban inspiration, which was the answer to what I was looking for. Because I love God, but I also love what we call in Atlanta trap music. You follow me? Trap music. Trap music. Urban music, you know. Um, and, and so I had to find a happy medium within it. And that's when I began to adjust. I began to create the music that I was looking for while also researching and, 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 and bringing people together to produce that. And it's awesome now because I'm looking, the Stella Awards have a category now, finally, yeah. called Urban Inspiration and all of that. Yeah. So it's worked. <laughs> it's worked. But... Uh, uh, sticking to your question, it, going from Young Dirty Bishop to Ed Long Jr. was even a process. Because my, my, my birth name is Edward Long, and my dad's name is Eddie Long. My grandparents were that country. They named him Eddie. You know, no, they never named him Edward? No, his name is Eddie Lee Long. Mm. My name is Edward Lewis Long. Gotcha. So my middle name is after my maternal grandfather, 
and my first name is a derivative of my dad's name. Mm -hmm. And what he told me, he said, well, look, I, I, I wanted to name you Junior, but I also wanted you to have your own identity. I don't think he went far enough away from his name in order for that to take place. Gotcha. Once I started preaching... And at the time he named you, mm -hmm. he wasn't the Eddie Long no. monster, <laughs> minister, no. you know, that, that, that he died as. No, so no. Can... So, so, you know, I told you, his vision was a thousand members. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so here we are now, and I'm in my mid-20s. I start, you know, getting out, moving around as now a young minister. Etc. Evangelizing, etc. And as ministries are bringing me in to speak on the flyer, I'm seeing Eddie Long Jr. Eddie Long Jr. Mm -hmm. I'm telling them, hey, my name is Edward. My name is Ed. It don't matter. Yeah. They still gonna put what they want to put. Of course. And so now I'm saying, okay, this is a marketing thing too. Of course. This is a. It got so bad one time. I was in Milwaukee speaking at a church, and they put mm -hmm. Bishop Eddie. Edward Long Jr. I said, okay. Now, wow. now y'all gonna get me in trouble because yeah. Bishop Pearson gonna be calling me talking about when, when was your consecration? <laughs> when, when did you become bishop? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, um, you know, he and I going back and forth. I just embraced it. It, it was easier just to embrace it. Uh, I talked to a friend of mine as well, Fred Price Jr. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know he's not a junior. His older sibling, who passed away, was the, the junior. junior. Wow. He's simply he, he, his name is. Frederick Price, his dad was Frederick K.C. Right. Price. But the same thing happened to him, so he just said, look, all right, I'm Fred Price Jr., yeah. you know, and uh, we laugh about that to this day. So, 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 so in that, my dad was trying to ensure that I had my own identity. And even through all of the name matriculation, et cetera, he still allowed me to explore me. You know, I, I say this to people is that... Uh, I, I was thinking even the other day, you know, I, I sent my dad through it, you know, uh, just a lot of different things. I was that child, you know, pregnancy scares. And uh, I remember one time I called him and just repented to him. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I had sex in the back of your car. You know, you let me use the car. Cause, like, cause yeah. I was wild, but I was honest. Sure. sure. <laughs> well, yeah. you, see, your dad, you don't create the kinds of inventions that, Eddie Long, Bishop Eddie Long created without being risky. Mm. That wild thing in you was just sanctified mm. because he had wild dreams and wild visions. And as he grew, his visions grew. And the same is happening with you. Mm -hmm. You have the same energy, the same ideologies in a lot of ways, the same imaginations that go beyond uh, born, uh, new birth. Had he known when you were born what new birth would be, mm it might have changed his attitude even toward being married and mm. having children because of all the legacy that followed. Mm. You're, the, you're the firstborn to his first wife, mm -hmm. but you're not the eldest Long. Mm -hmm. my, my older sibling's adopted, right. His name is Long, too. Yeah, legally now, yeah, Eric Long, uh -huh. yes. And you're fairly close to him? Yeah, we're close. You're, 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 um, talk about the family dynamics. Mm -hmm. As a, as a small child, your dad was more involved in your life because you guys were living in North Carolina and he had more time to be there. Mm -hmm. And as the after the divorce, there was a little bit of separation, I'm sure, at some point, and you evolved into a certain type of independent Eddie Long. Mm -hmm. What were your... Tell me about that part and then when you felt the call to preach mm -hmm. and then the ordination, licensure and ordination the comparison is different. If you had been mm -hmm. in any other profession, mm -hmm. there would not have been the same comparisons, but accepting the call to the ministry. Right. And of course, we would have all uh, expected you to succeed your dad, and he would have expected the same. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't happen that way, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> but when you were first ordained and licensed, what, was your, what were your feelings then? Awesome, awesome. And so, at what state was your dad's ministry in when you were ordained? Awesome, so, so, so for clarity. Um, once he came to Atlanta, he stayed. He and my mom, they went to college together. And That's both how they them, met. Yeah, and so my mom came to Atlanta first as a stewardess. And then my dad came to Atlanta, let her tell it, chasing her. All right. <laughs> I got you. So, uh, She's you know, gorgeous, by the way. Praise God. Yeah. And so she, he enrolls in uh, ITC and, you know, begins just growing in the ministry. 
she connects him with, shout out to Reginald Wilborn, Pastor Wilborn, and uh, he became associate minister there and just really began growing in the ministry. The late Reverend Wilborn, is he still alive? No, he's still alive. I was actually just with him last week. At I love the life. Um, my dad was probably 29 30 ish, uh, when they, when they, when she connected and introduced the two. Pastor Wilborn would have been then. Man, he might have been maybe five, six years. So he's not, he's my not dad. an old man. No, 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 okay. no. Cl- cl- more so peers, sure. if you will. Gotcha. Um, and, and so, you know, we were residing in Atlanta. My mom and I moved back to Carolina after their divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to fourth and fifth grade there. And I, I talk about a good bit of this in the book. Fourth and fifth grade in Atlanta. In Carolina. So you left, okay. Yeah, but my dad remained of course. in Atlanta. And so by the time I was in fourth and fifth grade, we were already at New Birth. So he's nestled in, you know, building the ministry there mm-hmm. at that time because we came to New Birth in 87. I was almost five years old when we came over to New Birth. Gotcha. And so, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's still building the family, but now our family is blended. While he and my mom are married, you know, he's mentoring at the time my oldest sibling. Shortly after their divorce, he, he moves along and uh, legally adopts him. So now, you know, he's got two sons. And then he meets my bonus mother around uh, 89, 89, 90. They lock it down <laughs> and, and get married. And then they have my younger sibling, Jerry. So now it's three of us. All right. And I would joke with my, my dad all the time. I said, man, you know, you got a lot of baby mamas. <laughs> you, you, you got a lot of baby mamas, I got you. you know. Uh, and then, you know, one of the girls in, 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 in the family. So adopted my younger sister, Taylor. And so here it is. Uh, we, we've got this blended family. But I think that it's, it's, it's a real expression of who my dad is because he was all about the kingdom. Yeah. And, you know, the kingdom is an array of races and, and, and genders and nationalities. Uh, my oldest sibling, his mother is Italian, all right? So, wow. you know, th- th- that's one expression. Yeah. Then, you know, my mother, people used to call her white girl, <laughs> you know, uh, very fair-skinned, but not mixed at all. That, that's the funny thing, but very fair-skinned, really? uh, African descendant, green eyes, all of that. Then my bonus mother, she and I favor very closely. And then my, my, my little sister, so, you know, we got all of these different dynamics in the house, but it was a true reflection of his heart true. as a father, a father to many, no matter your background, you know. Um, as we fast forward, you know, I go through, I grow, sow my wild oats, doing all this craziness. And my call, actually the chapter in the book is called The Call. You know, some people hear from the Lord. I, I know even as you uh, w- were talking about the, the inclusion, you know, uh, ministry that you have and, and uh, hearing directly from the Lord. For me, I didn't hear from the Lord uh, about getting in the ministry. Mm. I got a call from my dad. Yeah, of course. That was the call. I know. I know. <laughs> it's a literal call. He was the Lord. <laughs> you know, yeah. and um, the church was uh, in influx. This is before all these lawsuits and all this allegations and all this stuff. This is around 2008. And I'm on the trajectory of being syndicated with my radio show. That you hosted? Yes. Uh-huh. And so I'm, I'm right here on the cusp, having meetings, was meeting with Sirius XM and all of this. And he literally calls me and says, son, I need you. I need you to step up and really, you know, move forward with this youth ministry at the church. Mm. Now, how do I tell this man? No. <laughs> you don't tell any long no. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and I'm not looking at it through the bishop lens. I'm looking at it through the dad lens. This man is, you know, s- school and, you know, just making sure I've, I've had what I've needed. H- how do I refute this? Sure. Um, but that, that totally changed the trajectory of my life. He called me. I'm not licensed at the time. I ain't been to school for this at the time. I got a bachelor's degree in business and, and that's it. So, uh, like many of my peers, jump into the faith without all of the accolades, mm-hmm. without, you know, uh, the, the things that theologians would say, you got to have if you're going to go down this street, Doc. <laughs> you now, know? he was asking you to become his youth pastor. Yeah. Youth minister or pastor? Youth minister at the time. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Without licensure or ordination yet? Nothing, no. You hadn't even discussed the ministry? No. You hadn't even considered the ministry? What I was doing for the ministry at that time, I was the um, 
I was the color of the, I was hosting our, a lot of our youth conferences and events and things of that nature while I was moving around the road as an artist, as a writer, as a performer, et cetera. So uh, working in it in a real formal sense, nah, I, I wasn't doing that yet. So I answered the call and then had to go back and, and, and get the qualifications, <laughs> if you will. It was okay. retro uh, spectrum for me. Yeah. So after that, you know, um, I, I, I enrolled at Beulah Heights University in Atlanta mm -hmm. and, you know, get on the pathway to get my master's in religious studies. Uh, I took a few classes at the church concerning ministry and all of these things. And then I was licensed. And, you know, that licensing service was a game changer for me. Mm. Um, Your dad presided over it. He did. Mm. And... Bernice King was there. Oh, Bernice. Mm -hmm. at, at the time, you know, he was her pastor. Mama King had just transitioned about two years before, Bernice and she laid hands on Pop and, you know, um, transitioned the mantle of her husband, if you will. Transferred it. Uh, onto my dad, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it just was so much. And so he has Bernice to come up and lay hands on me while he does. He has my uncle who had fought prostate cancer for 16 years mm. and just had that type of strength to come up and lay hands. So we, we got all this, it was a moment. Powerful that, for you. Yes, very, very. I ne never, 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 never will ever forget it. And, and, I, and I talk a lot about it in the book because um, as, as time has gone on, and that's about 14 years, 15 years in the rearview mirror right now. I really do believe that that moment equipped me to stand through everything that came afterwards. And even still to this day, you know, because it's, it's still a fight. It's still a struggle. Sure. But the impartation of that moment, God in his infinite knowledge knew that that was necessary for me to keep going, even without my father's physical existence now. What 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 are your high, highest expectations, not your dreams, but your highest expectations of your own self? Mm. Um, if you can separate that from... No, 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 I get it. I get it. You know, people dream about, especially in my space, winning Grammys. You know, people dream about being millionaires, billionaires, and all of these things. Uh, all of that's great. You know, I relish in it, embrace it, etc. But for me... To be the best husband, to be the best father, mm, good. Um, to stand on my dad's shoulders on the things in private. And it, one of Pop's biggest things was I, I don't want to be a public success a and a failure. private failure. Oh, I got you. And so I, I want them both to match. But, but, but for me, that doesn't mean perfection, all right? It just means continually being perfected. Gotcha. It means being, you know, going back to the name Young Dirty Bishop, I was announcing to the world then, I, I, I know that there's a work that God has for me to do. I didn't know it was going to end up being preaching. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on urban inspiration. But I was telling the world that I'm a person of faith, but I'm also dirty. I got some stuff I'm working through. Gotcha. So Powerful. You will never be able to exploit me. It, it ain't no skeletons in my closet. Why? Because I keep the door open. Sure. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. you understand what I'm yeah. saying? And so as long as I am able to maintain that level of transparency with my spouse, with my children, with those who matter, sure. then I'll continue to say, okay, I'm successful because that's what's most important to me. The... Um <clears throat> the title of minister and then bishop or pastor, they're weighty titles mm. and different levels of weightiness. Your dad carried them all. Then there's doctor and there's apostle and there's evangelist and there's prophet. And there's the five-fold expression which often flows through any particular ministry. Mm. minister. Um, as you look at your dad's life and uh, your relationship with him in ministry, how much was he able to mentor you in ministry as um, not in opposed to, but in comparison to mentoring you as a father? Or mm. was there a separation or a distinction, I should say? I don't think that there was much 
of a distinction in the way that my dad mentored me and fathered me. I think that it was, for him, I think it was kind of one and the same. My dad really wasn't systematic. You know, he, with the flow. he, he was an unction person. He gotcha. was a flower. Mm -hmm. You know, flow was one of his key words. Just flow with me. Just mm -hmm. flow with me, From you know. And, and, and so he would, always, he would often talk about catching. You got to just catch this. Catch me. Catch you know, this. I got you. Uh, he talked a lot about Elijah, Elisha, and just all of those things. So, you know, we're in a time now where everybody's coaching. Everybody's got a coaching program and all that kind of stuff. I don't think he would have did well in that. It, it, I think that's too structured and too rigid. Yeah. In, anyone who he walked with, you did life with them. And so for me, it's um, there was a level of structure I wanted that I just realized that ain't his way. So let me conform to his way in trying to get what I'm trying to get sure. from him. Let me learn how to get on his beat. And when I began to do that, um, I noticed I began to accelerate. I gave it up and just accepted that this is how he is mm -hmm. and I can do it my way when it's my turn to do it my way. Um, it's an important point that you, you didn't overpressure your father and you got in your flow. Mm -hmm. That's an important point. Mm -hmm. Preacher's kids are always under pressure to measure up. Uh, there's there's life, there's le legacy, there's love, and we're always struggling with identifying with one of those when we're aware of it. Mm -hmm. Be, if your dad just had a nominal or even a, 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 a less pronounced ministry, your succeeding him might not have been near pressure or desirous. Mm -hmm. You could have gone into other, because you're gifted, you could have gone into other areas. Your dad showed the best of what a preacher could be mm -hmm. and create mm -hmm. in this life. He, and he did it in a short period of time, comparatively. Mm -hmm. He built a, a mega ministry, way more mega than he expected, as you to mm -hmm. a thousand in those days. When, in the, we're talking about getting a thousand. That's what a mega church was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started in a storefront church and I went to some of these, what they call idea, idea changes. You had to have a membership of a thousand or more mm -hmm. to even speak. And I was running maybe six or 700. I said, within a year, I'm going to have a thousand I'm members. I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah. I, and I came back <laughs> because I was wanting to engage and talk in the, in the session. We're all trying to live up to something. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable enough to say, what are you trying to live up to? Mm, that's a great question. I'm not trying to live up to anything. You know, I think more so for me is, and I'm being real honest with you now. So that means I'm being real honest with everybody who's watching this. Yeah. Um, I'm motivated more so by not failing. By not failing. Gotcha. So it's kind of inverted. No, I get you. I wake up every day saying, thank you, Lord, for new mercies. You've chosen to keep me, so there's a reason why. <clears throat> Don't let me mess it up. I, I, my trajectory is not to build. Um, I've got plans to build, let me be clear. But that's not my motivator. My motivator is don't let me embarrass your kingdom. Don't let me jack all this stuff up. Gotcha. I come from great legacy. It doesn't matter what anybody has to say. Don't let me put a stain on it. That's what I'm motivated about. I'm not, I'm not motivated for pushing my name. That's why it's easy for me to just, Ed Long Jr. Jesus said he don't consider it robbery. Right. To be considered you know? equally. Uh, yeah. And so I'm okay with all of that. I just want to make sure that I don't blow it. Well, I definitely relate to that. <laughs> when I was a younger man um, coming up in the ghettos of San Diego, I did not know, not in, in elementary and junior high, what I wanted to be. I knew first what I didn't want to be, mm. which was a loser, uh, an alcoholic, a spouse abuser, uh, a bunch of kids out of children out of wedlock. I didn't want to be an uh, substance abuser. I saw that around me, mm -hmm. uncles and cousins. And so I was busy trying to 
to make a checklist of things I didn't want to do. <laughs> and in the midst of that, I evolved into something that I had. And I've always had dreams of things. So when I said, when you want to live up to something, you really made a, an important point because none of us wants to f fail. Mm. But what does succeed mean? Mm. Is that becoming a doctor or a lawyer or a business person? Because we all have these dreams. So what, what does, and it's hard for you to say because, you know, my mentor was Earl Roberts. Mm -hmm. Before him was Bishop J.A. Blake. And of course, my dad has always been my mentor. Bishop J.A. Blake had the largest Church of God in Christ in our city, one of the largest in the state. And in those days in the country, Bishop J.A. Blake, who has been in heaven since 1984. Um, but then I come to the biggest guy in Pentecost, Oral Roberts. Mm -hmm. I call him the Pope of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. We just took a little bit of a tour around it. I drove you this morning. Um, that's hard in that he had this this bigger than life thing. Mm -hmm. And part of my motivation of a, a little black kid from the ghettos is to build or be. I had to wrestle between building and being. I didn't want building to destroy my being. Mm. Because I live with the person I sleep with every night, not the building that I build or buy, and not the crowds that heard my last sermon. One of the loneliest places in a preacher's life is when the crowds have left, and you can say, I can't get no help up in here. Wow. You know, and because you're constantly getting accolades, accolades, mm -hmm. accolades mm -hmm. from the people and reinforcements. When you're by yourself and you're not comparing or competing, if you can think, what are you, what are you feeling at that moment? Now you're married and you have children. This is your second marriage. So how do you evaluate Eddie Long apart from your dad, if that's possible? Because saying Eddie Long, Richard had to do with being Richard Roberts. Mm -hmm. His name was an Oral Roberts, and I spent many hours mm -hmm. and years as a friend with Richard Roberts. Uh, it's just interesting because some of the people watching this have children. They're doctors, attorneys, business people, school teachers who are going to watch this or read your book who have children, and they're children of famous or mm -hmm. infamous mm -hmm. parents that they're trying to come along and establish a legacy while living in somebody else's. Mm -hmm. You do live in your dad's legacy. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate it and still find your space or create your space? Wow. You know, one, as I, as I was saying before, I don't consider it a robbery. So I've accepted that this is who I am. This is whose son I am. At the same time, when did you accept that? Um, if there was a time, when you didn't. I don't know if there's a, 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 a certain moment. Okay. I think it was an evolution of accepting while he was alive. While he was alive, and even in this transition, you know. Um, How has it changed? Has it changed at all since the transition? Since the transition has actually become more valuable. Gotcha. Because I watch people abandon my father. I watched people who he supported abandon him. I hear you. I watched um, people try to devalue him, <laughs> devalue what he built. But then I also watched those same people that when what he established became vacant and available, all converge on it. Line up, ready to get it to try to acquire it. Wow. To the point that they were willing and did abandon what they had and establish to acquire this, mm. which meant that it don't matter. It, it, it didn't matter what was said about them, true, false, or indifferent. They recognized that what this man had on his worst day was better, better than, than what I had on their best day. Yeah. You feel me? Of course I do. And so, now I can mark when that hit. <laughs> and when that hit me, I said, oh, this is a great thing. This is awesome. I, 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 I don't have... Hang up. Oh, is that, bell? You're not hearing that, are you? It, it might hear, but it's, it's going to be... You sure? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry for you. You're right. An important point. Go ahead. So once I realized that, that the value had not gone anywhere. It just may have been a little smear, a little stain on the brass. Mm -hmm. And we just need to polish that thing back on up. I didn't get here alone. <laughs> and I can't get to where I'm going by oh, myself. Yeah. So it, 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 it's both. And um, I'm authenticated by being whose son I am. Mm -hmm. 
and um, my children will be authenticated by me. Sure. It, it, it's just passing this thing along, so I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. I relish it. You know, when, when people approach me now, if the catalyst to work with me is because of whose son I am, I'm okay with that. Through time spent, you and I, you know, this is our second, third time together. There mm -hmm. are other people who, you know, I, I've, I've gone to dinner once with, another time with, you know, and we, we hang out more and they begin to get to know me for me. It doesn't take away anything else, but it's like, okay, I, I see who this guy is now. The more I'm preaching, the more I'm doing this, et cetera. So it opens doors for me to be who I am. What does the text say? Your gift will make room for you. Yeah. All right, so we think about that oftentimes as if you're a painter, if you're a writer, whatever your self-expression is, that's your gift. But also, my father was my gift. gift. Of course. Glad to hear you say that. So him being a gift to me is making room for me. Of course. I'm quite all right with that. I hope every child of a, or sibling really, of a famous or infamous person can, can forge out your own identity the way he has. You could take the negative road or you could take the positive road. You could look at the good, you could look at the game. You look at the gutsy part, the hurting part, the embarrassing part, the speculative part, the critical part. And what I admire is I'm watching you navigate and negotiate your own life mm. in light of the fact that your name is Eddie Long Jr. The, the name of a famous world, a household name. Mm. Um, if your dad was a movie star or a football player or some kind of an or a politician, mm -hmm. you too. And a lot of children of famous people love to be secluded and isolated and unknown mm -hmm. their whole lives. Mm -hmm. And I understand that and I, I respect it. If you, if your name wasn't Eddie Long, but your last name is just Long, mm -hmm. you're the son of a preacher. If you said, my now my new wife, my child is going to be exposed to my legacy, mm -hmm. their grandparents' legacy, we're religious people, there are certain <laughs> expectations right. for preacher's kids, and that, that might be for a rock star's kid. Mm -hmm. So ours is a highly regarded, highly respected uh, a preacher, especially a bishop, uh, is considered the second cousin to the Holy Ghost to some people. You know, you got to heal everybody, fix everybody, mm -hmm. be perfect. You weathered that well. Thank you. You could have been an alcoholic, a substance abuser, and you, you may be that we don't know about a closet. You can talk about it. <laughs> you know, kid. You, you're stable. When I met you, we, we were, what, what was the name of the restaurant? In the, Highland uh, Bakery. Yeah. You had a gun. You got Come you, on. You were cut, cut off. It was hot <laughs> summer. And you got out of And I thought, this dude is packing. Well, let me let me find out what his attitude is. <laughs> I don't know if he was mad at preachers, mad at you. I didn't mm. know. I had no idea. So I said, dude, you packing. We, we mm -hmm. all right? And you then you gave me your old spill on, mm -hmm. on, uh, on guns, which I thought was interesting. Hey, that's the Georgia way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were unapologetic about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you made me feel secure mm -hmm. that you are a risk taker. Mm -hmm. And that you believe in freedoms, mm -hmm. you're your own man. And mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. And of course, the book um, opens you up and validates you even more. We usually get our validation from our fathers. Mm -hmm. We need our dads to validate our masculinity, our personhood, mm -hmm. our humanhood, in a different way than we want our moms. And um, I would expect you to be warped and crippled in some ways. Um, and you have a, a a very remarkable balance to you. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean you're perfect. I'm even suggesting that because you know that's not true. Right. Uh, the way people's expectations of perfection are, they don't exist. Mm. But you're maturing. Even since I met you, wow. however many years that, that has gone, mm. I was interested to read through. Your book is very clear, very confronting, and not necessarily combative, mm. which it could have been. And uh, you have a, a, a tenderness about you mm, okay. and the, your sentimental appreciations of who you are, who your dad is, what people are. Your dad saw the best in everybody he met mm -hmm. and brought it out. Because mm -hmm. your dad lived all his life, as most of us do, not maybe using this statement, I just want y'all to like me. You don't have to love me or work just like that because I need to like myself. Mm -hmm. Most people do not like themselves. That's true. We're not taught to like ourselves. We taught that we have to love God. As we were talking at breakfast, I didn't like God for years. I ain't that crazy about him. Mm -hmm. I love him, <laughs> the God that we were 
talk to believe who has attitudes and wrath mm -hmm. and sends earthquakes. A huge and, personality. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can't see him and you know he reads your mind. So that image of God, of course, I'm changing some of my thinking about that, but it's still there. And it creates a kind of global psychosis, mm. a mental illness. When Will Smith slapped uh, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, he wasn't just slapping Chris Rock. Mm. He was striking at everything that offended his manhood, mm. his husbandry, mm -hmm. his profession. He wouldn't have done it. It was a slap moment. Mm -hmm. There are times when I would have wanted to slap a trustee or a deacon. <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> when people start saying that I didn't believe in it, I said, no, I know too many people I want there. Um, that's the human side. Mm -hmm. What's your human side? The part that would, would, wouldn't would mind just smacking somebody, starting with you. <laughs> um, Some of that comes out in the book, but I want you to identify before we begin. Yeah, the, the human side of me is, um, it, it, there's a turn up guy in there. I, I'm not afraid, you know, uh, really of anything. I'll speak to anybody. I'll say what I need to say to folks or what have you. Uh, I've had to learn how to do it with grace. My dad would tell me, he would say, Long, you know, um, you're a little too tough. You, you got to be a little, little more meek. You know, he said, you. and, and your problem, he would say, is you bring too much light too fast. Too much light? Too much light too, too fast. fast. It blinds the people. He, you know, he's, an example he would use is, um, you know, some people wake you up in the morning and they go and turn that little thing and the right. blinds open. Mm -hmm. You just come in and just pull the cord. Yeah. Just the whole thing just go up. Yeah. You know, you know, I so I, I'm, 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 I'm still developing the grace because I know some people view me as an antagonist. Yeah. But that's, that, that's, I'm not an antagonist. It may be my methodology that makes me look like an antagonist. The truth of the matter is I hold close to my heart, blessed are the peacemakers. Sometimes it takes a little roughness, a little tension a little yeah. to get to peace. Meaning if you got two people who are not on one accord, we may have to have a little argument to get to the forgiveness line, to the apology. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it took some tension to get to the peace. I'm not afraid to speak to the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. not so we can continue not getting along, right. but so that we can get along. Sure. Um, you, you, talk, you talked about the peace, you mm -hmm. know. Georgia's the red state, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, we got the right to walk down the street, you know, you with a rifle like thrown across your back. Oh, and and so I, I'm going to embrace all of my liberties. But my first mind is not to shoot. My first mind is to resolve, you know. I think you got to have a little Malcolm X and a little Martin. You know, you. Atlanta's the home of Dr. King. Yeah. You know, we want to stay as nonviolent as possible. We, 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 we don't, we didn't come for all that. We came to have a good time. I hear you. But we just let you know if it needs to go there, we can go there as well. So I'm, I'm growing again in how to diffuse certain things and what's the best way to get to the desired outcome. Keep praying for me on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the word antagony or antagonist, the root word, the primary word is agony mm. and agony. What agonizes you? Mm. I'm an antagonist too. Mm -hmm. I have certain ag uh, agonies in my life that are not necessarily negative. They make me who I am mm. and they force me to express myself and experience myself mm. at a level that I'm, if I'm too careful, I never will. Mm -hmm. um, what agonizes you the most about your life or about your profession mm. or about your dream, your vision, your, your, your worldview? Mm, great. You can probably attest to this. Preachers agonize me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got me on that one. Keep going. I'm there. <laughs> um, you know... <laughs> Not preaching, no, preachers. No, yeah, preachers, yeah. Very, very yeah. No, I got you. Because I'm agonized by not seeing the sermons preach be the words that are lived. I hear you. I think the best sermons are the ones that are lived. If I can't see this in your life, you know, uh, preachers will preach about love, but don't love nobody. Yeah, I know. Preachers will tr preach about not coveting, but will cover everything that's due you. And to <laughs> preach about giving and be the smallest giver in the church. Come on. I so I, I am antagonized by that because of the image 
that we all now have to share in and how the world views us. Yeah. It limits all of our witness. Um, you know, I've been dealing with church hurt. It took me a while to get this book out because I wanted to make sure I'm writing from a place of being healed. Right, not and just hurt. Not, yeah, and, and, and on the pathway to wholeness. That was important for me. This was cathartic as well it, for you. It, it was definitely um, it, yeah. all of that. That, that, was, that was my counseling, <laughs> you know, right. Um, right. which I believe in. Yeah. I stay in counseling. Yeah. And, and, and so I didn't want to write this book and it, and, and it be a weapon. I didn't want to write the book and someone else can take it and weaponize it. Uh, I wanted to wait till I was at a place where I'm good. Um, when dealing with preachers, ministers, pastors, etc., the church hurt that I have felt is that the world has treated me better. better. I'm not talking about my dad now. No, I hear you. I'm talking about me. I hear you. I the hear world you. has been more embracive of me in the past five years than churches have. Sure. There's no reason, purely just based off of whose son I am, me being in the profession, and me, I, I've never heard no one say I'm a bad preacher. Now, I, 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 people may, you know, I've had people admonish me. I've had people, you know, give me some very positive critiques. But nobody's ever told me I'm bad. Right. So if I am, I got to cuss my friends out because they're not being honest with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All I right? Mean, yeah. So, so purely based on relationships, I've had people come to me and say, man, why you ain't on this person's conference, on that person's this or that? I would think they would just put you on because of what your dad did for them. In the streets, in the world, that's just the G-code. Mm -hmm. You make sure that your partners are taken, care of. are taken care of, looked out for. You put them on. Gotcha. So that's not happening in the body concerning me, my mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, if something happened to you, this is how you would want your peers to treat your offsprings. Of course. To leave them uncovered, all of these types of things. I, don't, I, I have a problem with that. Now, I, I have to pray on that often right because I see people out and about, you know, and they'll come up, speak, love, you know, give me a, a handshake or whatever, but I'll text them about something and there's no response or I'll call or whatever, but then I have to say, you know what? This person wasn't willing to stand face forward with my dad in the sunlight. So I need to adjust my expectations concerning them. It's sad that I have to do that, but it is what it is. I, th that agonizes me. I don't like it. So I go to the, to the extent of celebrating those like yourself mm -hmm. who do what's right. And you and my dad were not buddy, buddy. We were, right. You know, mm -hmm. and you went through your you know, being ostracized and all of these different type of things, but yet through it all, you demonstrate love. You demonstrate the right things to do. Yeah. I should not have to go to the world. You know, it, it, since we're talking, you know, you asked earlier about theology and all these things. Pastor Troy, who's a rapper, once asked a question in, in his song, Vice Versa. What if heaven was hell and vice versa? If I told you go to hell, would you say I cursed you or reimbursed you? So, so what he's saying is that what if we got this wrong? What if the kingdom is really the world and the churches and all of that, and the world is really the kingdom? I wrestle with this in my mind because of the fruit that I see, of the treatment that I see. You talked about Will Smith. We talk about, you know, you, you, you got this football player out of Texas who's got these allegations, but just went and signed the biggest contract. deal, contract, for a quarterback mm -hmm. out of his worst situation. Church folk would have never allowed Never. Mm -hmm. So who's really demonstrating kingdom principles? I know. But what, what did Paul say? Let you who are spiritual. Restore. Restore. Not let you who are religious. Not let you with a title. Not let you with all these other things. So now I'm starting to look. I'm saying, well, if he's being restored, if she's being restored by these, then maybe they're actually the spiritual ones and y'all are just the theological ones. Let me bring up a point that we may or may not use in the in the show. I was watching the service of part of the 
a fantastic eulogy where you spoke. Mm. The service itself was eulogistic. It wasn't just the chief eulogist, Bishop Ellis, who preached. Mm. The whole service, the word you means elevate, look us, is to look, speak highly of a person's life. That's mm. what eulogy means. So it's about speaking highly. A lot of those people in that room, as you alluded to when you spoke, were not sure at that time what your dad may or may not have been allegedly guilty of. But they celebrated him and all the amazing things he did with his, in my opinion, short-lived life, because we're around the same age, he's a little bit younger than me. But it was at the peak, mm. you know, just mm. impacting the world. If those people believe that your dad was something other than a straight preacher with a powerful ministry, would the church have ever given him permission to become as great as he is? You know the answer. <laughs> I do know the answer. And that's an important point. That same group, that whole thing was a lot of hypocrisy. You saw it. I looked, I was invited to go, but I saw a lot of preachers there who I knew had bad mouths or dead and would not endorse him before or since. Mm. You're pretty powerful. You have a great pulpit ability. If I had never heard you preach, which I hadn't, just to see you stand on that platform, grieving in your spirit, mm. in your soul, take the mic for the few minutes you did and take command of the pulpit and command of the room, own it, something your dad was proficient at. Mm. Uh, you, you held your space and you, you were not apologetic. You didn't even see, seem grieved in the sense you were mourning, but you weren't grieving and there's a difference. Mm. The Bible says, blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted. Right. There's a certain amount of your life that mourns and you only find comfort in mourning. There's no comforting grief because then you go to finger pointing and you know, mm. calling people names. So you, you found a delicate balance in that, which is a good lesson to all of us. Hurting people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And you do have pain and you do have agonies but you're managing. I don't know. The, the Greek word for healing most frequently used in the scripture is therapeo, mm -hmm. where we get the word therapy. Mm -hmm. It's not iomai, which means to cure. You're not cured. I'm not cured. Mm -hmm. I'm being cured, mm -hmm. which means I'm being more made more accurate in my life I love or ad care That's what the word comes from. You're, you're curing and caring. You have a sensitivity. Your dad had, I think, maximized that part of his soul to where he could f see through anybody's fault, including his own, to the best mm -hmm. of who he was. That's a gift that I embrace mm -hmm. from God in me, mm -hmm. that I can look, I automatically see the best mm -hmm. and not the worst. Jesus says, go in, and it's quoted to say, go into the vineyard and work. And whatever is good, not whatever is bad, I'll pay you. My religion is, you better get your, the Lord, you, you got to give an account <laughs> of every deed. And that is a scripture. But it also says he throws whatever our sins or our different perceptions of sin are different or, 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 or uh, distinct. Uh, he throws them into the sea of forgetfulness mm -hmm. to remember them no more. Mm -hmm. Does that mean, and it doesn't mean till judgment day when you're standing in line hoping that Peter finds your name, which is not scripture, in the book. Mm -hmm. All the names are written there. And we have, we have personalized scripture interpretations and made it very, very dogmatic and doctrini doctrinally off. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people struggle with church hurt. Mm -hmm. I hear more from people who are struggling with church hurt now than I ever did yeah. before I started preaching inclusion. Mm -hmm. I know what church is. I know how the church can be mean. Part of your message is they're all sons of bishops, mm -hmm. you know, and not, not just the title, uh, but we all, we could say sons of bitches, you know, it sounds <laughs> close enough and it sometimes it fits, you know, mm -hmm. but the way you, you've termed it, you relate, you were sitting recently with a group of young ministers, you need not name them, but, uh, there are young sons of bishops mm -hmm. coming on that you guys are able to talk and befriend each other. A lot of us do that when we're young and our ministries are growing, but once they get really huge, mm -hmm. then we get jealous of each other and stop talking. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ever do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I made it my effort not to. Yeah that we grew up with these young guys together. I've seen Eddie, Paul Morton, Kenneth Ulmer, myself. We were all young men starting out together. I had more notoriety because I was associated with Earl Roberts mm -hmm. and hosting TVN, so no people, more people could see my growth. Right. But when I, when somebody told me your dad had 6,000 members, 
in the 90s, and I had never met him or heard of him, I said, these guys are just being cocky. No they, no black preacher in this country got 6,000 members. And I don't know about no, real arrogant. He did have 6,000 members. Mm -hmm. He was believing, as you said, in the 80s for 1,000. Mm -hmm. When he left the earth, he had over 30,000. Mm -hmm. You all just knew of 30,000, but he, through television, yeah. The you can't even count. Yeah. Look, look, look at that. Oral Roberts, the baby center wasn't as packed for a memorial service as, as uh, New Birth was. Mm -hmm. It's 10,000. We see 11.6. I had as many as 12, 8 before the fire department shut us down. With wow. For, not for a funeral, but mm -hmm. for our Azusa mm -hmm. conferences. So your dad has an indelible imprint on the culture and the consciousness of the country. He was to do exactly what he did, the way he did it and expose and expel these false images that we often have of ministers or ministry. Mm -hmm. We're hurting people. Right. And we're healing people. We're healed healers and healing healers. Mm. You're bringing health and healing and therapy. You're literally doing group therapy with this book. Wow. To both pastors and people that are old enough to be your father, which I am, and young people. You met my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, she's younger than you. But this is going to help a lot of people. This is a very important book. It was uh, part of your assignment praise God. to build it. If you had a different attitude, it wouldn't help us. Mm. You have a healing, hope-filled attitude. I'm reading it in the pages of this book. Of course, I've been browsing through it all day. A lot of beautiful pictures you have. That's your dad. And maybe, is that your older brother? Actually, that's, that's me in the middle. That's my maternal grandfather. Is that you in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, that's in 08. That was the, the day of my licensing. You're that much taller than your dad? I was oh, yeah. Like, and, and, and who the other gentleman is? That's my maternal grandfather. That's I have his... That's your mother? My middle name is his first name, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a legendary photo. He's gone now? Yes. Yeah, he lived to be 92. Your maternal grandfather lived to be 92? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Wow. Two most influential men in my life. That's so... Deacon Lewis Houston, was that yeah. his name? Mm-hmm. Look at that smile. Wow. That, that's a beautiful... Like he, he smoked cigarettes on the steps of the church and went inside and he prayed it down at the pulpit. Look at that <laughs> Baptist. Yeah. See, Baptists can get by with a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now your dad became one of the most pronounced Baptocostals. Yeah. How about that? And uh, Yeah. I mean, he, he, I had, when I was in college, my sophomore year, I fasted and prayed for three days mm -hmm. for God to, quote-unquote, save Stevie Wonder, uh, save Red Fox, mm -hmm. and sent a move of the Holy Ghost with, to the Baptist church. I didn't meet Red, I met him, but I didn't see him come to Christ in this, but his mother let me know afterward that he was a man of faith and she prayed for him. Uh, of course, Steve had been a Christian all most of his life. He grew up around the church of God in Christ. He's one of my dearest friends. Um, and then your dad, Bishop Morton, moved with, with the full gospel right. Baptist fellowship Hundreds of thousands of Baptist people who are already filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues mm -hmm. kept it quiet, just became loud. Your dad uh, built the largest Baptocostal church mm -hmm. in human history. Right. Wow. Do you realize that? Yes. And it's still going. 240 acres. Yeah. yeah. I, I was down there recently uh, with a friend who owns property, Mr. Allen, that backs up to Love him, man. He's, he's such a kind gentleman. You know him? Yes, very well. Just the sweetest spirit. And we were eating in uh, the restaurant, and Jamal was there with one of his uh, associates, and well, had mask on, so mm. we didn't recognize each other right away. But what we did, we just embraced. Mm. You are, you're okay, as you are, who you are, and church as we knew it is changing. Mm -hmm. It already has changed. It's imploding, which there's a private rotting mm. that has been there for a long time wow. that has gotten the best of a lot of people when it explodes there will be a lot of exposures mm. i'm just saying this now so you're not and others are not taken by it. this is not the judgment of god it's the universe correcting herself or itself purging and replenishing and exposing cleansing clearing clearing and correcting itself and we're going to be better than we were mm. you are called to the 20th century mm. version of religion mm. in america of the black church you own the name. You own the legacy. It's very powerful. It's not just pastoring new birth. 
which you could have had, and you were on the staff there. Your your help, you will help pastor the new birthing of a consciousness mm. that far extends the walls of any church or any denomination. Mm -hmm. I want you to see that, to feel that. You are succeeding and beginning a new birthing for your generation. Praise God. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And there are no walls to that. Mm -hmm. And there are no limits to it. Mm -hmm. You sing, you write, you're poetic, you're scientific, you're philosophical, mm -hmm. you're theological, you have scholarship and academic. You've got a lot of things working for you that your dad didn't even have. Mm -hmm. He provided for you the kind of training and exposure that makes you head and shoulders above our generation. Now, I respect him because he came up as I did in the similar generation. Mm -hmm. For your dad to achieve that kind of a success in the generation that he, that your, that your grandfather uh, birthed, mm -hmm. the man who lived into his 90s, you, are, you had a life of privilege. Mm -hmm. So there's more expected of you. To whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. you, you wrote this testimony and you showed some of the tests you failed and the, some of the tests you passed. Mm -hmm. You show all of that in here. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Praise God. It's very helpful to us. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you. And when we when we do this, of course, of course, we'll show pictures. You're gonna, if you, I would buy this just for the pictures. They're all in color. <laughs> Most people do black and white pictures. Mm -hmm. This man got colored pictures all the way through the back of it. Some people just know that so they're gonna see his gorgeous wife. Mm -hmm. We can get a close up of that later. Where's Mike? Oh, there he is. You can do this later. I don't know if it's shiny. But uh, she's just absolutely... You weren't just walking by faith, dude. You was walking by sight. You know? <laughs> I can tell. She's... Can you redo that when you're not editing on camera? <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to edit it. You're going to edit it after. Okay, I just want to make sure that... Oh, you'll show it differently. Okay. Anyway, look at this. This is, this is the last picture. And it's the beginning of his new little child in there. Mm. I think that's just precious. And then there's so many, there's just all these beautiful pictures of him with his dad and his family. And they're all in color, just a host of them. They're not only in the back of the book, they're throughout the book, mm -hmm. which is good taste. Thank you. Very, very well written. And it's very earthy mm. and human. It's not uh, uh, um, pretentious in any way. This, this is textbook quality. I want you to have your own copy. Now you can go online and get it off of Kindle. You can get it off of Amazon. When the bishop is traveling, or the son of a bishop is traveling, mm -hmm. he should have some with him. Mm -hmm. Those of who would like to have him come in and speak and minister, not just to your youth, but to everybody, anybody. And those doors will open wide. This is just great. I'm really proud of you. I salute you. Wow. I celebrate you. I respect you. I value who you are and the contribution that you're called and coded to make. Praise God. There are no limits. No there boundaries. are no limits mm -hmm. and there are no boundaries except any that you create. Mm -hmm. And you're pretty boundless. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're pretty boundless. I love that about you. Anything else you'd like to say as a closing comment? Um, I think I placed it in that cover just to celebrate you. You know, I've watched you from afar and um, have been very encouraged by you. Mm. I thank you. I thank you for standing through uh, everything that you had to stand through mm -hmm. and not giving up. You never know who's in the wind watching and rooting for you. That's I've true. learned sometimes our biggest fans are in the stadium, but they're quiet. Yeah. And we hear the boos more than we hear the cheers. Very true. That means they're not there. Very true. Sometimes we just don't have the strength to cheer and they get it mm -hmm. as you start winning. Mm -hmm. And you're winning. You're winning a major way, and you're bringing people together. You're helping people to heal. Feel me? Thank you. I do. People who would never come to church. You know these things. I just want to reinforce it to you. I thank you. I really do. I thank you for now. Well, you honor me for saying that, and I appreciate your observation because that shows what's in you. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of each chapter, I suppose, it says reflect now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the end of chapter... I don't know the number of the chapter, but it says this is important, these three questions. Mm -hmm. You have them at the end of each chapter. Mm -hmm. This one says, what are some things, people or situ what are some things or situations that are currently distracting you? I can stop right there. <laughs> and not only what is distracting you, but why are they a distraction to you? That's an important question to ask yourself. Second, 
Who is depending on you to make spirit-led decisions? Mm -hmm. That's a very weighty question. Mm -hmm. And the answer is even more weighty. Mm -hmm. And it's very sobering. Mm -hmm. It demands response and responsibility. The third one is, what are your guilty pleasures? I ain't telling you all that, but <laughs> what are your guilty pleasures? What purposeful activities can you replace them with? <laughs> I got chills. I'm gonna slap you. That's, that is so, <laughs> that is so good. I, just them three questions alone, I need to go get on my knees. That's just, this is, this is very helpful. Because you're not just telling a story, you're, you're teaching and instructing and constructing. Mm -hmm and uh, building up. It's a book of edification. I just think it's so uniquely written, and it's so uniquely you. I'm proud of your nudities, I would say. The, Adam, the Bible says Adam and Eve were naked and felt no shame. Mm -hmm. You disrobe in this book, mm -hmm. and there's no shame. Mm -hmm. And so those of us, and that naked just means vulnerable. I got you. Exposed. The root word for naked is the same root word for crafty. When it says that the serpent was more crafty or subtle mm. than any of the animals, that means he was more exposed. Mm. Most of us, if you're going to be have integrity, that, that means you integrate all the aspects of yourself and your soul that are real. Mm. The part that's frightened and bold, that's angry and repentant and forgiving, that's happy and unhappy. There are different modes. I don't call them personality disorders. I call them personalities out of order. When they get out of order, they can become destructive. Mm -hmm. When you keep them in order, there's a time to be sad. Mm -hmm. There's a time to cry, as scripture says. Yeah. Solomon, one of the saddest scriptures in the Bible, the saddest lines in the Bible, my least favorite, and probably one of the most accurate, he says, meaningless, vanity, mm -hmm. vanity. Three times, all is vanity. That's a sad way to end your life. He was only 70, but he built... Wow, he, was a, he was a horticulturist, an agriculture, a poet, a scientist, a philosopher, uh, built castles with swinging gardens. And then he ends his life by saying vanity? I don't think his life was vain, and that life is vain. He just didn't understand purpose the way we do. Mm -hmm. See, he functioned. So this is going to really bring out some things in all of us as we read it. This may be one of the most important books. Wow. Of your generation. I know you'll write more. This was mine. That's yours. He done signed. He put a signature. <laughs> the, old folks, the old folks didn't, didn't know how to say signature. They, put your signature on there for me, son. That's it. He put a signature in there. So this is good. All right. Peace and blessing to all of you. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks for being my guest today. Thank you, Thanks sir. for being who you are. Thank you. Eddie sir. Long Jr. In the house. You're going to turn out to be something else. <laughs> <laughs> I tell some of the greatest guys I, I know, one of these days you're going to turn out to be something that are bigger than life. <laughs> well, I received this is great. it. This is great. Can't wait to meet your son or daughter. Mm. I don't know what names you're going to name, but it doesn't matter. Mm. They're going to be great. You talked about that. I, I was going to mention that, too, because, of course, I would want a third, you know, um, but I also talked about, I mean, not talked about, but thought about fresh start, new beginning. Yep. I'm, I'm built for all that I've had to stand through. I got you. Do I want to put that Go great ahead. and challenge on my, you know. Think about that. And so um, that's where we are. Yeah. But it's all good. I got you. Well, whatever, regardless of what you name the child, he or she will still be yours. Mm -hmm. I struggled with, with with Julian not being another Carlton D. Pearson. He's glad his name isn't Carlton D. Pearson. Wow. He's happy that he's Julius because he has a chance to be who he is. Mm -hmm. I didn't force him into ministry. Um, if I felt he had the inclination, your dad saw something in you that you didn't see when he mm -hmm. called you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he saw it accurately. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have all these other gifts and all these talents, and you're going to do all of that. And you're a good combination of you can do your own talk show or radio show, the rapping the singing, the songwriting, and the music. You got to, and he didn't have all that in him. Mm. You got a whole lot more operating in you. Mm. Look what he did with what he had. And wow. you've got all this multiple talent. You're mm. going to have an appeal. And by the time he was successful in ministry, he was older. You're still very young mm. and uh, are going to touch a lot of people. I just really, your dad will be smiling from heaven. Praise God. Absolutely. He couldn't have chosen a better place or a better person to wow. be his son. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Best suggest to come. Can't weed your wife and your cheery. We'll get them out here. All right. <laughs> I'm going to come down there. What the baby's doing? June 2nd. 
But we thinking it ain't gonna last that long. My son was three weeks ahead of time. I had to really? charter a jet from from San Jose to get was, on back to get back because I didn't want to be <laughs> absent when my first kid was born. Right, right. So his, his mother kept saying, "Oh, don't worry about it. I'll be all right." She would have brought it up at our fiftieth. Oh yeah, you would never live that down. Never. <laughs> and I wouldn't have forgiven myself. I, I got to take him out, both my kids, wow. hold him in my hand, clip the umbilical cord, and lift them straight up to God. Both my kids, I did that. Wow, mm -hmm. that's outstanding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's been um, getting the um, Cramp, maternity the um, massages and maternity uh, chiropractic services. Oh, wonderful! And the chiropractor, he's told her the last two times, he's like, you know, you sitting low. You know, you, you he, he can come early. He, he's like, I don't know, I don't know if y'all y'all gonna go all the way with this one. This 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 might not. And so we went Tuesday. We had a um, meeting with the midwife. She said the head is already turned down. Already? Uh, yeah. She said it's, it's about right right here. So it's not, you know, six o'clock yet, but it's about right here, about seven. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Julian was early, and the doctor would say, push for it. She yelled, stop. And she reached in her hand and took a cord from around my son's oh, neck. Oh, wow. She didn't even tell us. She just did it because she's done many. And my son came flying right out right after that. Wow. But I could sense when she said that, it offended me at first because she yelled. And I thought, she, you know, Jim and I were both doing the breathing things. And once it happened, I got all the... <laughs> I don't even bend those classes. I thought, just breathe, woman. I can't tell you. You're going to breathe anyway. And so she just did what she was doing, and the kid came out naturally. Sometimes we put too much effort in trying to... Birthing is very natural. Mm -hmm. Even a ministry, there's work. When the scripture says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow, the word sorrow really means, as I said, task, mm -hmm. toil. Not task, but toil. You don't have to sweat it. Mm -hmm. Get in your flow. If your dad did, go with the flow. Grow with the flow, especially when it becomes a flood. You all in his stuff. He would talk about the sweatless victories. Sweatless victories? Yes. Really? Yes. I, I'm going to find one of the YouTube links and send it to you. He did a whole series just on the sweatless victory. And then when you were talking about unmovable, unbreakable, unshakable, yep. Yep. He, he tied all that into I mean, y'all just like this. I, I don't even know if you know that. No. Yeah. Y'all are just... It's amazing y'all went closer. <laughs> when he walked up to me in Vegas at the Trumpet Awards, there was a room full of ministers, and I was already had the stigma of being the, uh, heretic and all mm -hmm. that. He boldly, in that room full of luminaries, celebrities as well as preachers, he walked straight over to me, gave me a little peck on the cheek and said, Bishop, we didn't do you right. Mm -hmm. And those words were so healing to me mm -hmm. because I knew what he was saying, mm -hmm. that I had been rejected. He... Had, he didn't know my rejection. He later would, but he didn't then. But he he understood that preachers can be some of the meanest, most mm -hmm. critical. Mm -hmm. They're all in your face when you're doing good, and they can <laughs> pass their card and get you to give them a booking so they can get mm -hmm. an honorarium. I saw a lot of that. I saw it in Zeus. It was the most painful part of um, of the whole experience. The first thousand seats on the floor were for ministers. Wow. And then they were like fighting on them chairs. You know? <laughs> VIP. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they had this attitude. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, I never, I had that Bishop Mac McIntosh handle all that and put the people on the stage that he wanted on there. Okay. I didn't go there because it was ego, ego, ego. Right. When rumors came out that were unfavorable to your dad, mm -hmm. you as a son, not just a spiritual son, but his biological son, how did you manage that? Did you get defensive or, or offended? I'm sure you were hurt, but how is you as a Eddie Long? Mm. No other person on the planet has that name. Mm -hmm. And especially during that period when he had to wrestle through the PR and the bad media and the church's attitude. How did you how did you navigate that? You use the word manage. How did I manage that, right? Yeah. yeah. Initially. So we're talking about agony. <laughs> yeah. Initially I mismanaged it. Initially, I had to be managed. Mm. And God, man, God is just um, the sovereign wisdom of God to know who I am yeah. and protect me from me. Mm. I was sitting at a bar, myself and my previous spouse, who was my girlfriend of, or whatever at the time, mm -hmm. was sitting at a bar in East Atlanta. And... My dad calls me, and I don't remember his words to the T, just something about, hey, 
you need to come by the house or something. You know, uh, it's going to be some stuff on the news here shortly. And that was it. It wasn't much. I get off the phone with him. I look up on the screen, sitting at the bar. No. And there's the story. No. There was no heads up. You know, I got that two, three. I mean, it literally, as soon as I hang up the phone. Like the local evening news? Boom, on the screen. It couldn't have been two minutes in between me hanging up, telling her, like, hey, I, I got to go by the house, and looking up, and this is what's on the screen. What? Yes. Sitting at the bar. Wow. So I, I, I just had a little black moment. And me being me, you talked about, you know, when you met me, I had my, yeah. I probably, I don't know what gun I had on me then. Anyway, well, one mean, of them. That must mean you got more So I, I'm sitting here, and, and my innate thought was I'm finna go see them. That's it. I had a Springfield Armory XD9 in the car. That's what I had. That day? That day, in the car. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, because I know these guys. You feel me? Some of them have been to my house. All that. I'm like, what, 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 who, who, who? This is what y'all gonna make up? Come on, man. Whoa. So literally, as I'm trying to check out John Gray, Pastor John <laughs> W. Gray III, yeah. walks in because he lived above the bar. He was in a single bedroom condo at the time. What? He comes there. I don't even know how he knew we were down there. I don't know. She texted him and told him. I don't know. Did it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. He walks in and sits down next to me and asks me how I'm doing. And I said, um, I'm finna go take a ride. And he knew what I meant. And he said, no, you're not. You're not going anywhere. You're going to sit right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sit with you. And we're going to get through this. So again, Oh, I powerful. mismanaged it initially. You would have, yeah. I would have murdered one of them. Mm -hmm. And right now, I would probably still be serving time. Wow. I would have missed being at my dad's home going, sharing the words I shared. Mm -hmm. This son of a bishop book would have been a whole nother trajectory. And the baby on its way. It, it, oh, wouldn't even, it, it would be a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. And so God covered me, used John as the vessel. Beautiful to show me how to manage this. We gonna sit right here. I'm gonna sit with you. Talking through it. And we gonna get through this. Mm. And from that moment going forward, I just stood. Donnie McClurkin, what do you do? Yeah. You just stand. stand. Yeah. I just stood with my dad. What do you need? How can I help? Beautiful. The, the ministry of, 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 of presence, just being present. The ministry of presence. Beautiful. Letting the son stand with his father. Mm -hmm. Letting sons stand with their father. Good. To be consoling. And that's the pathway that I learned to manage that situation. Wow. Brother, that's, <laughs> I love your response. Mm -hmm. The scriptures talk, talking about, talks about even covering our father's nakedness. I know my dad, I knew all my dads whether that's Oral Roberts or Bishop Blake or my own dad or my grandfather. The men in my life were powerful. None of them tried to act perfect. We all have feelings and hurts and mm. questions. But when your dad is your dad, your dad is your dad or your mother is your mother. Mm -hmm. They cover us. We should cover them, mm -hmm. especially against false accusations or allegations or lies. Or even if something is true, you still cover your dad. Right. You still cover your spouse or your children. Uh, and in the body of Christ, that's one place we fail profoundly. Right. The so-called body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We have failed <laughs> repeatedly. Sometimes I call them the booty of Christ. Uh, <laughs> if, if you got a body, you got a booty on there somewhere. And so sometimes church folk can, can be <coughs> faith or far. <laughs> right. Know, and I've smelled both. So that needs to be brought out. And you touch on some aspects of it, of course, in the book. Great response. Awesome. Thank you, sir. That was then. If you had have rejected your dad, nothing would have been any other allegations. Nothing would have hurt him more deeply. Oh, it would kill him. Yeah. He was too much of a father. Yeah. He thrived on fatherhood too of much. Course. Wow. One of his last statements to myself and my younger sibling. Mm -hmm. You know, we preached together, um, and, and, and we did our most face forward public ministry together in the last about three months of his life. Mm -hmm. 
and we were walking into the sanctuary um, that December, Christmas. And he says to my younger sibling, Jared and I, as we're walking, mind you, he's taking this stroll with Jakes and, you know, this pastor and this bishop and Paula White and so many, you know, it's a hall of fame, if you will, all these pictures on the yeah. wall and all of that going down this walkway and steps. Mm -hmm. He said, at the end of the day, nothing pleases the father more than to be walking with his sons. This was how long before his transition? Three or four weeks. Three or four weeks. <coughs> he was already a little skinny and gaunt looking then. Mm, may, I may have been 132 pounds there. Wow. From 240. Wow. Wow, what a story. Mm. And your younger brother was there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just walking with him. Not much to say, but just to feel. That's you just cool. embrace a statement like that. Yeah, of course. And then the statement embraces you as mm. well. Mom, I wasn't glad we got to that. Is that <laughs> do you allude to that in the book? I do. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned that um, in our conversation earlier that um, <clears throat> you lost your job just was was towards the end mm -hmm. as youth minister. Yeah, he replaced you with someone else. It never really replaced me. You know, New Birth didn't get another. It's funny the person who ended up being the next youth pastor after I was the youth pastor was a person that I worked with in another setting who's a female. And so I even, you know, I offered to help and support her in stepping into that role, if wow. you will. Um, Beautiful spirit. It, 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 it was very upsetting how it took place. My dad had a way of doing things and not really communicating what the whole plan was, gotcha. if you will. Yeah. And so in releasing me, there wasn't much conversation about it. And I was really frustrated. Actually, I was angry. I was mad as hell. Let's just be honest. Good. And so in that, in talking to some other friends and associates who, you know, he shared with, um, they believed that my dad was trying to cover me, trying to cover me from just the onslaught of stuff and attacks and all these different type of things with the ministry, if mm. you will. And preserve me so that I could have a clean and fresh start. Gotcha. But we didn't talk about it. So we couldn't make that decision together. I'm the type of guy, I, I, I speak on in the book. Don't send me to boot camp and then not let me go to war. <laughs> what else was I trained for? Sure. I, I don't let me spar. I don't need to be in the boxing gym working out with this guy and all. And if if you. I'm not gonna get I got you. in the ring, if if Atlantic City or Vegas is not on the trajectory, then, then what are we Why doing? Are we going through all that. I, I'm not the the, the simp, the, the pump. You got to preserve, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know that that was a we, we had a drop down argument about that. You know, and I chose to forgive him. Because that's the right thing to do. I chose to forgive him because I wanted to, but also, God is funny. When the text talks about don't let the sun go down on your quarrels with one another. Right. Because somebody could die in their sleep, heart attack, break in, get murdered. Anything could happen, and you never get to apologize to one another. Y'all get, never get to work through that. And so while we were in the midst of this tension with one another is when we find out he's sick. And so here it is. Now we're, we're on the front end of the sun going down. And so I had to give it away. It's like, that's not important enough. That's not a big enough deal to hunker on when we're talking about life. And I praise God because my dad could have transitioned. In the through, midst of the team. You know, uh, Miles Monroe's, his children, uh, Tarisha and, 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 and Miles Jr. and I, we, we, we're really, really close. Mm -hmm. I got what they didn't get. Their parents jump on the plane, routine, and it's Not done. No chance, yeah. I hear you. That sunset real quick. Right. At least I was sunset was seven, eight months. And the scripture preceding that, don't let the sun go down the wrath, says, be angry, but don't sin. Oh, my God, look at you. That's, that's the context mm -hmm. of that whole passage. Be angry. Be ang It really means be angered. Allow yourself to be angered, 
but don't miss sin in that portion. Don't miss the point of why you're here mm. or even why you're angered. Mm -hmm. It's part of living. We all, I thought about that when Will had that moment and struck um, Chris, right, yeah. Chris, I keep wanting to say Chuck, but Chris, um, that was a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was angry and he followed it up with sin. Mm -hmm. So a uh, sinning against himself, really, as well as against uh, the comedian. So um, not letting the sun go down on your wrath without revolving or resolving the mm -hmm. matter is what that also alludes to. But it's important for all of us to understand that when we talk about antagony, there are moments. Mm -hmm. We just get ticked off, mm -hmm. and that's unavoidable. Your dad had it too. Mm -hmm. Anybody that goes that far in life has paid a price. Yeah, a lot of people disappointed him. Mm -hmm. uh, right in the prime of his life, long before all these rumors and all those guys that accused him that nobody talked. Incidentally, nobody talked about prostitution. If that was happening, and they're sell, selling their stuff for a watch or a ride or a college degree, nobody brought that up because we're not talking about little kids. We're talking about young men that knew mm -hmm. what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then for them to just boldly make those allegations and nobody ever brought up the part about what if? Mm -hmm. If it had been women, it would have been the same allegation. Well, what, what, what did you women do? Mm -hmm. now, they don't like to hear that. Mm -hmm. Or what did you receive? Wow. Nobody talked about that. Mm -hmm. They just villainized the preacher mm -hmm. or the, the celebrity or the Bill Cosby or whoever it is that gets these allegations. And uh, I've had them against me, not publicly and not legally, mm -hmm. but people have said things. I was single for 40 years. Right. So they, they put, they imagine. Had, oh my God. <laughs> and then sometimes the, the allegations got worse when I got married. Mm -hmm. There were death threats on my wife. Wow. She didn't even know. I couldn't tell her all this. She was not, she, she, this big ministry. She marries into my my uh, ministry, the family and all that. She kind messed of, up a lot of women's game plan. Oh my God. <laughs> and I don't know what she saved me from. But these were Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, pew jumping, Bible thumping, you know, toting, devil thumping women. Right. Who I know loved God. Uh -huh. But they had were misguided right. by their emotions. Mm -hmm. I always say anger is a signal emotion. It, it signals emotions, commotions, or devotions. Wow. in somebody's life that have not that been properly processed. Process, yeah. You can't just throw them out. We hurt. Mm -hmm. That's what's good about this book. It's good about your attitude that you confronted those fears yeah. and confronted those facts and of being a preacher's kid and being now uh, divorced and remarried. Mm -hmm. um, and all that adds to your character mm -hmm. and adds to your cause and your calling and your coding on the planet. Again, as I said earlier, you could have been an alcoholic, a drug and a bitter, angry guy that you wanted nothing to do with the church or God or faith, but you aren't. You know what just came to my mind? Go ahead. You are, you are so responsible for this book. I just remember. And I thought about it a couple of times going through this process. Do you remember what you said to me when we went to eat? You told me, you said, don't worry about the church right now. That'll work itself out. Yeah. All right. I meant new birth. Yeah, right. You said that'll work itself out. Yeah. You told me, you said, um, you don't know much about me, but you watched enough to know um, I'm smart, astute, pay attention, all of these things. You were you were really yeah. edifying me. Yeah. You said, go on and explore some other things. Go and, you know, try some things that are in my heart, write a book study more, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then you said, don't write a tell-all. Whatever you do, yeah. don't write a tell-all. Yeah. Write something academic that people will that will cause people to respect you. And then it's exactly what you did. You doing. gave me that wow. challenge. Wow. Yep. You gave it. I said, I was going to text you about it when I was writing the book. And I always said, no, I'm going to wait to tell them once I'm done with it. Wow. I, I, the, that's why we had to keep going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the enemy didn't want me to give you that I'm prop. glad you said that. I'm glad. Amplify that more than anything else. Let him hear that if you don't hear <laughs> Well, it's constructive mm. and instructive, and it's valuable. Mm. And so I respect you for that. That's just that's something about your character, something you learned from your dad, I'm sure, in, in ministry, because you have to be very tactful on that platform. Mm. you got audiences listening to you. And now your audience will expand. Uh, people are going to be interested in what you have to say because you're now a healed healer or healing healer, mm -hmm. and we all need it. Okay. I mean, again, secular people who have a prominence will want to read that book. That's why I read the f first part of it. Are, do, are, are, do you have children that are struggling with their, Richard, Richard Roberts used to say, 
uh, often on the stage. And they hired me to help him. His dad told me that later, but mm -hmm. I didn't know it at the time they hired me, 1975. But he used to open up his services by saying, how would you like to be the son of a world-famous evangelist mm -hmm. who emphasizes miracles? So Richard didn't just have to be a great teacher, preacher like his dad. He had to demonstrate. He had to demonstrate. Wow. Wow. Or else the whole thing is expect miracles. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody expected a man that people came to for hospital prevention to actually invent one. Mm. And that drove you by today. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't succeed in his lifetime. But there's a big hospital there now. Mm -hmm. the Oklahoma City. Beautiful, too. Yeah. 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 So that's encouraging to me. And he died with a debt-free ministry. Look at that. Wow. The the Greens, who are the owners of founders of Hobby Lobby, came in and just and the place is spectacular. Oral will be so elated about how the university looks. Mm -hmm. They keep it kept up and neat. They're adding buildings, very pristine. Yeah. And again, that right hand is his, and the left hand is Dr. Winslow's, whose son I knew, or uh, where you grad had some struggles in his own life, came through it fine. Uh, I have a lot of history that I look back on, and now you're part of it. Wow. You're part of his story and her story. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of girls, young girls, daughters whose fathers are prominent and had no son. Mm. But the daughter came along mm -hmm. and she carries on the mantle mm -hmm. and picks it up. And Oral used to say to me, um, I went to see him a lot when he was down. He said, well, he could forget, you know, something. He said, why are you here? Uh, I said, well, I just came out of here. He said, why? You think I'm going to die? Mm. I said, I know you're going to die, but not today. <laughs> He said, well, a lot of people are coming in to see me, and they would pay money to see him. I said, well, they, they want your mantle, but I don't think they understand the mandate. He said, talk to me, son. Because everybody wants your dad's mantle. Mm. What's your dad's mandate? Mm -hmm. Whoever succeeds him. It, and Oral, the mandate on Oral was not confined to ORU, which mm -hmm. is in walking distance of my house. Mm -hmm. It's global. Mm -hmm. It's a universal mandate. Mm -hmm. And this book appeals to all walks of life. Praise God. The kingdom. The kingdom. Mm -hmm. The kingdom. Mm -hmm. The kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is good. Yes, sir. Yes, I, sir. I got to pay my water bill. <laughs>